So, I guess all of you know this gorgeous nebula. It's the Orion Nebula, one of the most beautiful deep sky objects you can imagine. For most astrophotographers, it's one of the most prominent and of course tempting deep sky objects of the winter night sky. The only thing that makes it hard to take images of this relative bright object is the cloudy winter weather. Clear nights in this time of the year are rare where I live. After my last recording session of Mars, click here for the link to the video, I tried to take some shots of the Orion Nebula with my new ZWO ASI 290MC planetary camera through my C9 and a quarter inch telescope at a focal length of 2350 mm. The total exposure time measures less than a minute, but I was somehow hyped because I like the idea of taking lots of short exposed images and stack them. I tell you why in a minute. Here you can see a comparison between a picture I took a few years ago with my GSO 8 inch Newton and the Canon 600DA. And you can see as well the new test image with the C9 and a quarter inch and the planetary camera. The question still is, what is the benefit of short exposures? The higher the focal length is, the bigger is the effect of atmospheric turbulences. So if you reduce the exposure time to a minimum, like a second or a few, you can prevent to catch more atmospheric effects that would diffuse the final images. In conclusion, that means if you want to take detailed images of deep sky objects, you need a high focal length and a short exposure time per image. Then you should of course stack as many of them as possible. What makes this type of taking images difficult? At first you need to have to find a good compromise between exposure time and gain. The more gain, the more noise you will see. So in fact I tried to reduce the noise to a minimum visible on my monitor. I took 3 second exposures with gain 200 in fire capture. I recorded 319 light images. To reduce the noise I recorded 30 dark frames and 50 flat frames in a way similar to taking images with a DSLR camera. I tried to record this way earlier. A few years ago I used my first planetary camera, the QHY2C, for the same purpose. The results were less spectacular, but still interesting. The biggest problem was the lack of guiding, because, as you can imagine, that was in fact my guiding camera. This time I could use it to guide while I shot the images with the ASI 290MC in fire capture. That makes it a lot easier to center the object you want to take photos of. Planetary cameras have small sensors, so it is important that the center of the image stays the same. That is why guiding is really important. This is what finally came out. Now I am even more hyped. The total exposure time measures less than 16 minutes and there is already so much detail visible. You don't face the typical problem that the core has been burned out. So you can easily light the faint parts up while paying attention that nothing becomes too bright. Don't forget that this camera is not even cooled. Slowly but very interested in what's possible with this combination I will go on try this on galaxies and planetary nebulae in the future. If this is what you get in 16 minutes then I really want to know what M51, the core of the Andromeda galaxy or the Dumbbell nebula look like with this kind of recording. And it's not hard work at all. A well collimated and aligned telescope is almost all you need. So if you have any questions or experiences with this kind of taking images, please let me know in the comments section.